Hi guys, this is Feedback. Um, welcome to my top 10. We've already decided to do like a top 10 games. So my t number 10 was Divine Divinity for the PC. Um, only came out on the PC platform. It's available on Steam still actually to buy if you, if you wish to, to still play a bit of retro RPG action. I basically chose this just because I had hours of fun on it like when I was, at, when I was just getting into my RPG scene basically. Um, I think the storyline was really good. The only thing that I'd, I'd ever say was rubbish about it was the fact that it had no audio for actual acting. Like the NPCs didn't didn't really speak. Like on the main storyline, so he had to read a lot of stuff. But apart from that, like reading it, I really did get into the storyline, and I really was quite addicted to playing the game. It, like, loads of character customization as well. Um, I think there's a couple of classes on there, like warrior, wizard, your standard sort of play. So yeah, really good game. Really enjoyed playing it. And number nine, Legend of Mer, massively online multiplayer RPG. Me and Drago I both played this. I was I was really addicted to it to be honest. I played on the Euro Mer, only really managed to get to level 40, which was quite poor to be honest. I think like the maximum was like 60 or something stupid, ridiculous like that. But like literally that to get to 40 took us took us ages. We actually eventually got banned for hacking accounts, which is a bit naughty, but it happened. Game is still actually available on private servers around the internet, so it could easily be picked up if you Google it if you want to play. It originally came from Korea and imported over to United States in 2009, where GamePot picked it up, which is now unfortunately that's gone under. Um, Murphy is still available though to to play in the Euro, I think. I'm not sure on the website. I'll put it in the description if I can find it in a second. But yeah, that's Legend of Mer. Hours and hours of my life wasted. Next up, number 8, StarCraft, released in 1998 for Mac and PC. I think it was also ported over to the Nintendo, but I'm not 100% sure about that, so I didn't it in. I've seen some footage on YouTube of it. The reason I chose this game, really, just because I, 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 a lot of hours played. Um, we used to have like a, a BNC network in our old house. Um, one PC upstairs, two downstairs, and we used just to play skirmishes all the time, really, whenever my, my brother-in-law or brother came over, we'd, we'd be playing it, sort of thing. Um, Obviously, you've got the StarCraft 2, which is which is now um, out on the PC. Which is it is to be honest, it is really good. It plays exactly the same. It's people still playing tournaments on the first one, tournaments on the second one. I do believe. I, th I think Drago is, is well into it. He watches um, like the live feeds and stuff of the tournaments played. I'm not so much into that, but I, I, I do really enjoy the game. Still play StarCraft 2 online with Drago as well. Here and there, we have we play the crowd matches. Yeah. So it is really an enjoyable R RTS. Okay, next up, number seven is Metal Gear Solid 1998, released by Konami. Um, available on PC as well, which I missed out there. But obviously, you can you can play on your PlayStation 3 still and PlayStation 2, I, I believe. I played it PS1, really enjoyed the game. Like probably well, one of the, one of three or four, I think, games of its type around at this time. But I think really the one that set the standards. Obviously, you had Siphon Filter, and then a, a few other, a few other games, but I can't remember the titles to be honest. But this is the one that I played. Really enjoyed the game. Probably completed it two or three times. Like the AI in it was awesome. Like, really, really good. Like sort of like Secret Service. Obviously, you played um, Solid Snake, and you know he was badass, wasn't he? Really, let's be honest. It's quite a lot of anime behind it as well. Like uh, you know, Japanese love their anime stuff, and there's such there's loads of that in, implemented. It may have even been based on it. I, I couldn't tell you, but yeah, loads of, loads of good little tricks in the game. I can remember like it's it's an unplug your control, put it into port two, and stuff like that. To, to defeat certain bosses, but you know, shown in this video here, like the AI just knocking on the door, he's, he just hasn't got a clue, he's, he's just wandering around. But really, really good game to play. I'd recommend even playing it now if you haven't played it before. The graphics aren't as good, but you'll get used to it. Next up, number six, Fable, released in 2004 by Lionhead Studios. Um, this is this is a video figure from Fable 2, maybe. Um, I played on Xbox 360 for this one, but it is cross-platform. I think the reason I chose this really is because um, it's probably this first sort of game that's, that I played on the Xbox that was good in the way of RPG play. Like it had, it had some real good customization. You, like your character changes appearance. If you were good, if you were evil, if you ate too much, you have to lose weight. You could get married. You could have kids. It's almost like the bloody 
It's like an RPG of The Sims, basically. Loads of good magic. The graphics actually quite good, to be honest. I think this is actually a video off the PC version, so maybe there is a little bit less less detail and stuff in the Xbox version. But yeah, a real good storyline. Got addicted to the whole series. Still playing them now. Although saying that, I haven't really um, played the latest one, to be honest, as much as I as I played the first and second. So I might have to might have to like get a purchase and have a have a quick go on that. Because to be honest, I probably am missing out. I'm not sure what else they could do with the game, but I'm sure it's still a good story as it was before. What is that? Shown here in the video, like the AOE was really good, like you could charge bursty spells to this sort of radius, and you release it and you get these slow motion effects and just absolutely annihilate everything around you. Wicked game. Okay, so next up, number 5, World of Warcraft, 2005 release by Blizzard Entertainment. I played on PC, I do believe it's also available on the Mac. Really, really good game. Still do play it. I get cravings now and now and then, sort of play for a month and then off for a month. Subscription at the moment is currently inactive, but I have my characters obviously sat on Silver Moon. Um, probably about two or three 80s and, and one 85. Did start playing the Mr. Pandora expansion and got quite into it, but I don't know, it just sort of fizzled out and I haven't really been back to it. But yeah, I would recommend this game. If you and your friends want to get into it, like it, you can play a, a free 14-day trial. I do believe, like the end game stuff is really good. Even when you get to the top level, there's still loads to do. Like obviously getting your kit kit better than everybody else and upgrading things. And you've got your dungeons and you've got your your raiding, which is which is really awesome. You know, like you've got 25 people raids where, you know, you have to be good at the game. Basically, you have to like your character has a certain thing that you need to do and your job role to do in that sort of raid. And if you don't do it, then you'll get You'll get booed and hissed out of the uh, out of the group. So yeah, real competitive games. PvP on there as well. So that's real good fun as well. I think that's what they're doing here. But I didn't really get into the PvP. I, I, I didn't replay really a lot of it. The only reason I did did do that is just to get the PvP set up and sort of start my character. So yeah, World of Warcraft. Okay, so next up, Diablo 2, released in 2000 by Blizzard Entertainment again. Sort of like a, in a bit of a rut with Blizzard Entertainment, but you know, they are, they are the daddies. Released on PC and Mac, um, three CD-ROMs, real good game. I, 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 I honestly, I must have spent about fucking a year of my life on this game, to be honest. Like, I'd stay up till 7 o'clock in the morning to get a level higher than my mate. <laughs> but the storyline also really, really in-depth. Loads of customization, um, five character classes in the original. Well, in the original number two, I say, but there is actually number one. But I didn't really play that to be honest. You got like an Amazon, which is like a like a hunter, basically you know, the equivalent of a hunter in the in nowadays sort of games. You got a necromancer, you got a warrior, you had a wizard, and you had like a paladin. I think at the end of it, to be honest, I had all of them at the highest level I could possibly get. That's how addicted to the game I was. Did play the. Um, the sequel Diablo 3 which which recently came out really really good game as well to be honest but it just didn't grip me it did not grip me as much as the uh, this second one did I'm not sure whether because of the competition that's on the, on the market at the moment is, is a lot higher I mean around this era of 2000 there wasn't really any sort of competitor to Diablo 2 so that is what everybody was playing basically but yeah we, we played over LAN had a few LAN sessions on it and it was a really really a good fun game to play I wouldn't in fact actually say it was an RPG, it's almost like an action RPG because there's that much going on. You're always attacking stuff, running at you constantly and it's just, it is just like berserk. Okay, so next up is my number 3 which is Moonstone, released in 1993 on Amiga and PC by Mindscape. I did play actually on, on the Amiga on this one. I can remember having it on a floppy disk. I think it was like literally four floppy disks. Took ages to load. It's to keep swapping your disks all the time. But yeah, basically you played the job of either one of four coloured knights. Um, red, green, yellow or blue. Shown in this video is the red knight obviously. But yeah, you, you basically had like a world map and you'd, you'd have to go to all these little gravestones, I think as such as they say. But like it's each gravestone has a different sort of challenge in a monster. We can see in this video that was the swap monster, which was actually a really, really hard um, enemy to defeat, to be honest. And I must have died a thousand times trying to do it. So yeah, you kill them, and then you get to the chest at the back of the the scene, and, and you pick up your goods, your loot. Um, so obviously, the more gold you get, the more things you can buy from the shops and the sorcerers. You can even get you get your stats, you get your strength and stuff. 
Um, I also had PvP in it, like probably one of the first games of PvP in it. So you could both plug in a joystick on the Amiga and, and battle against each other, or even obviously play cooperative on the same map. The gore in it was awesome as well, look at that. Just blood everywhere. So even even killing even killing like a human player, you'd be able to steal the loot off him as well, which got quite annoying to be honest. And that's what the world map looked like. So you'd be these little uh, sprites that would be going around. Yeah. This guy seems to be getting a lot of action from the uh, from the AI players. He's obviously got something they want. But they obviously the aim of the game was to get the, the the four moonstones or five moonstones. So you collect all of those and then you'd be able to go into the middle, which to be honest I never got to. Because we had it on the Amiga and it was a dodgy copy. I shouldn't really say that, but yeah, it was a dodgy copy and it kept it crashed every probably 15 minutes, and you couldn't really complete the game in 15 minutes. Real frustrating. But even then, even with that, you know, I'd never even completed the game and it crashed all the time. And I'd get angry and I'd, I'd snap, snap the floppy disk and throw it around the room and shit. Still got number three for me. Awesome game. <laughs> Right, so my number two is Monkey Island, um, released by LucasArts in 1990 on Amiga and PC. It's also available on Xbox actually now, um, in like a HD deluxe version. Just, it, it is nice, but it sort of it pulls away from it for me because I love the old school spritey graphics and the, and the crappy MIDI sounds that you used to get out of the, your Amiga TV. Like. So yeah, I played on floppy disk, real, real big game. I think there's like literally six discs. So the storyline was really good. Like you played a pirate basically, and you you sort of you started like this show is like you, your money's full. You start with loads of stuff, and this guy, uh, La Largo in Barga, he, he sort of uh, he robs you blind, basically, and you you just nothing again, and you got to start and collect your stuff. Loads of comedy elements to the game, so you can choose what you want to say to people, and they have, they have a response to everything. Really well programmed. Graphics are even you know for 1990 they look pretty good. Really artistic. Don't really have a bad thing to say about it, honestly. I think at this point in time I was playing loads of point and click adventure games and really enjoying the fact that you sort of, it's almost like an alternative to reading isn't it really, Cause you, you, well I'm almost like those, I don't know if any, any of you guys play them but like a, it was those books where you turn to a certain page and, it, and whichever page you, you turn to changed your fate sort of thing, so it's almost like that you know you click and people say something and that changes the game in such, the music as well in the game is really really good. It's, it's almost like a reggae sort of piratey, twisty sort of. I don't even. I don't know who the composer was, but it, awesome guy. Lo loads of different scenes in the game that are, that are a bit weird as well. Like this, you had to go and uh, dig up a bone. It's just real piratey. I mean, who doesn't like pirates? I love. I love a good pirate theme, to be honest. I still play the game now. Like looking at this now makes me want to. Makes me want to go and play it. To be honest, all of these scenes are proper classic. Did in fact recently download it on my um, on my iPhone as an app, so you can go play it on there. Like real, real good time, real good to pass the time on the loop. I found, to be honest. And that brings us to our number one, which is the Assassin's Creed series. The reason I didn't really select one is because I think they're all awesome. Got well into them. 2007 release date on cross cross platform. I played on Xbox for a start, but I've now recently gone into the PC just because there's a little bit of an improvement on the graphics. I say a little, there's actually quite a lot. Um, so yeah, I'm, do, I'm playing Assassin's Creed 3 at the moment, really enjoying it. I've got some videos up on on the channel as well if you wish to watch. Like I said, I like a game with a good storyline, and this this goes in depth, like, a, like goes into the 2012. End of the world stuff goes into Illuminati, the Templars. Like there's, there's just, there's, there's a bit for everyone in there really. But I'm, I'm, I'm mad into my conspiracy theories and stuff like that. So if, if you are as well, I'd, I'd recommend playing it. So, how does she work? Have you ever watched it? Again, what I've really said ac across all of these games is, it's really customizable. You know, you can buy sets of armor and pieces of weaponry and stuff like that. Like Leonardo da Vinci it gives you all these little gadgets and stuff. Like, there's like a, an element of surprise almost there. But you never find yourself bored in in the cities as well. Like it's such a massive map, you can literally go everywhere you want. Really, really nice sort of free run on it as well. So you can just literally just it's it's fun just to just to be running and jumping across um, rooftops. In my opinion, this was actually a really good, good real good part in the game. I think this is um, this is the second one. Game also offers a, a multiplayer. 
option, which is actually also really good. Um, you basically just you're all sitting around in, in a small map, and you've just got to sort of assassinate each other. I would definitely recommend having a go if you've played the single player and, and you enjoyed it and didn't really think to, to check the multiplayer. Go back to it and have a good go because it is a really good a good laugh lot. So yeah, that sort of concludes my top ten. I hope you enjoyed watching it. Um, hopefully there'll be some by Dry Guy, Swiss T, and Craig soon for you guys to, to check out and, and comment on.